We are here in the Moody Center in Austin, Texas for Monday Night Raw. And unfortunately, we kick off the night with eventful yet somber news regarding one half of RK Bro, Matt Riddle. Earlier today, Riddle was found knocked out cold in the parking garage upon arriving to the arena. There is no indication on who may have done this to Riddle, but we can confirm that Riddle was taken to a local hospital here in Austin, and we are hoping to have an update at some point this evening. It is WWE 2K22 Universe Mode, episode number 25. We are live here in the Moody Center in Austin, Texas for Monday Night Raw. And unfortunately, earlier today, as you just saw, Matt Riddle found knocked out cold in the parking garage and his tag team partner, one half of RK Bro, Randy Orton, took to Twitter earlier today to make his case. Randy Orton stated, I just arrived here in Austin to find out that my tag team partner was assaulted in the parking lot. I'm pissed off, I'm confused, I'm ready to hurt somebody. I have my suspicions on who would have had their hands involved. At Fight Bobby, you've had an issue with Riddle for weeks. Or it went on to say, and now you have an issue with me, you weren't man enough to meet Riddle face to face. But maybe you'll be man enough to meet me in the ring later tonight. And if you don't come to me, I will come find you. Man up. Randy Orton calling out the leader of the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley had this to say in response. I had nothing to do with what happened to Riddle. I got what I wanted in our tag match two weeks ago. My win back. Hey, Randy Orton, maybe you should look in the mirror. After all, you stood your ass at ringside while we put the Hurt on your tag team partner. Lashley then went on to say this. Randy Orton, I'll see if I got time for you tonight. But rest assured, no matter what, the hurt will be put on you for putting my name in your mouth. Hashtag the almighty. So the challenge has been laid out. Will Bobby Lashley accept and meet Randy Orton in the main event? One on one tonight. High tension here in Austin, Texas. What is going to happen here tonight on Monday Night Raw? Very interesting situation. Tensions are high, like we said, but we're going to get set to kick things off inside the squared circle with a little bit of triple threat. Cruiserweight action. We're kicking it off with the swerve, Isaiah Scott. The following contest is a triple threat match. Making his way to the ring from Tacoma, Washington. Weighing in at 201 pounds, Isaiah Swerve. So we are getting set here to kick off the first match in the Cruiserweight Eliminator that will take place over the next couple of weeks with the winner challenging Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship at SummerSlam. Two individual triple threat matches where the winners will fight at a number one contenders match, which then, of course, will decide our number one contender for Santos Escobar, the leader of Legado del Fantasma and the Cruiserweight Championship. The next time we come your way on pay-per-view, SummerSlam, coming up very soon, right here on WWE 2K22 Universe Mode right here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And here comes participant number two in this triple threat matchup kicking us off here on Raw tonight. Angel Garza, one half of Los Lotharios with Humberto Carrillo. This is going to be a very exciting triple threat match. The cruiserweights are nothing short of impressive every single time they step foot in the ring. I expect nothing less this time around. And his opponents... Monterrey, Mexico, weighing in at 205 pounds, Angel Garza! It's been a little bit since we've seen Angel Garza here on Universe Mode, but I want to take you back to the last time Angel Garza versus Rey Mysterio stepped inside the ring with each other. It was an incredible contest and one of Angel Garza's most impressive matches in his WWE career thus far. That took place in an early episode of Universe Mode on WWE Main Event. And Angel Garza's just been looking to get back in the winning ways ever since. That match was, of course, originally to gain a spot in that six-pack challenge all the way back at Backlash for the Cruiserweight Championship, which, of course, Rey Mysterio went on to compete in. But Angel Garza here tonight, back in action, and he's looking to get himself some of the Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar at SummerSlam. Angel Garza was also 
a member of a triple threat matchup before Backlash. That was for the final spot in that six-pack challenge, which he came up short in as well. So two previous losses for Angel Garza when Cruiserweight Championship opportunities are on the line. Can he turn things around tonight? But he's got Isaiah Swerve Scott and Lucha House Party member Caristo on the other side of the ring. Let's see what happens. And representing Lucha House Party from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 168 pounds, Kalisto. We're speaking on the Cruiserweight Championship, and Kalisto is no stranger to gold here in the WWE. He is a former Cruiserweight Champion himself, as well as a former United States Champion, as well as a former NXT Tag Team Champion. Kalisto knows how to get it done in the ring, but it's all about putting together the wins when you're inside the squared circle. And what have you done for me lately? And Kalisto is looking to right a lot of wrongs in the recent years in his career and get back in a championship contention starting here tonight. This is your first match of the SummerSlam Cruiserweight Eliminator. Isaiah Swerve Scott, Angel Garza, Kalisto, triple threat match, one fall to a finish. Who is going to move on to the finals in the number one contender matchup in a couple of weeks' time? And here we go. We're kicking things off right away with Kalisto bringing the cruiserweight action to Isaiah Swerve Scott off that reverse Rana. And, of course, as we mentioned, the second triple threat match of the cruiserweight eliminator, which will take place next week here on Monday Night Raw, will be Humberto Carrillo, Lince Dorado, and Ricochet. And, of course, the winner of that match will meet the winner of this here match in a couple of weeks' time on Monday Night Raw. And then the winner will move on to fight Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship in that live premiere event, SummerSlam, coming up in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a great night, of course, already announced for SummerSlam. The men's Money in the Bank ladder match winner, the rated R Superstar Edge, will be cashing in his briefcase one-on-one -on -one against the phenomenal AJ Styles in the main event for the WWE Championship. That match stemming, of course, after AJ Styles defeated Edge at WrestleMania, which really kicked off AJ's recent momentum, which eventually led him to becoming the WWE Champion. Now their paths meet again, this time with the gold on the line. It's going to be a huge main event coming up at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship. Well, let's get back to the action inside of the ring, kicking us off here on Monday Night Raw. Cruiserweight Styles, Kalisto's controlling the ring in the early going. What about how we kicked off Raw tonight on a very somber note? One half of RK Bro, Matt Riddle, found knocked out earlier tonight, or excuse me, earlier today in the parking garage upon arriving to the arena. It's an absolute shame that we really don't have any indication for sure on who did that to Matt Riddle. Of course, Randy Orton. Riddle's tag team partner has his suspicions that it was Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley, on the other hand, has his suspicions that it was Randy Orton. And of course, there was a little bit of tension rising the last time we saw RK Bro. The last few times we've seen RK Bro, but a lot of direction really does point at Bobby Lashley as well as the Hurt Business as well. So, escalating situation there, and hopefully we have an update on Riddle as we move along here tonight on Monday Night Raw. But will Bobby Lashley accept Randy Orton's challenge later tonight to meet him one-on-one -on -one in tonight's main event in Austin, Texas? We will find out later this evening. As Isaiah Swerve Scott working over Angel Garza there. Remember, this is one fall to a finish. This is not elimination style, so you got to watch your back in the triple threat contest. Got to have eyes in the back of your head here. Nobody wants to give it inch, and nobody especially wants to lose a championship opportunity, potentially, by not even being the one pinned in this contest. As Angel Garza, look at that beautiful maneuver there. Angel Garza with the springboard. There's Isaiah Swerve. Scott follows it up with that Tornado DDT. Kalisto's down, and Isaiah was going for the pinfall, but Angel Garza too close to the ropes. Angel Garza, a generational competitor inside of this ring. He's got family lineage, excuse me, inside of the wrestling business. He knows how to get it done inside the squared circle. Former Cruiserweight champion himself, Isaiah Swerve Scott, a former NXT North American champion. So gold is in the history of all three of these men, but they're all looking to add more to that list. And what about Isaiah Swerve Scott? The last time we saw him inside the squared circle was, of course, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Where he went one-on-one -on -one with Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship. Unfortunately, on that night, through great effort, Kalisto, I got to cut myself off there. What a beautiful Frankensteiner to Angel Garza. And Isaiah controlling the ring again. But as I was mentioning, Isaiah's going for the cover here on Angel Garza and Kalisto bringing it up. 
But as I was mentioning, Isaiah Swerve Scott, he was in the ring with Santos Escobar with the title on the line at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Unfortunately for the Swerve, he couldn't get it done on that night. He put up a great effort. The leader of Legado Del Fantasma was the better man, and the title was on the line, and the lights were on bright back at Philadelphia on pay-per-view. So I'm sure Isaiah would love to get back into the ring with Santos Escobar and right the wrongs of Money in the Bank. He's looking good in this contest, but he's got to be able to put one of these men away, whether it's Angel Garza or Kalisto here. But Garza has got a hold of Isaiah Swerve Scott, and Isaiah eats the knees of one half of Los Lotharios there. Kalisto's on the outside. Isaiah and Angel Garza going out inside of the ring. A nice pump kick. And the Swerve is looking good off the double stomp. Follows it up with the kick. He's pinning together the right maneuvers here. Angel Garza's on spaghetti legs and another pump kick from Isaiah Swerve Scott. He goes after Kalisto, hits that Tornado DDT that has aided him well in this contest. Going for the cover over Kalisto here, but Kalisto gets the pinfall, or excuse me, gets the shoulder up on the pinfall. Awesome cruiserweight action to kick us off. And as we mentioned, it's only going to get better next week here on Monday Night Raw. We're going to see the member of Lucha House Party, Lince Dorado, take on the member of Los Lotharios, Humberto Carrillo, and they will be in the ring with the one and only Ricochet in the next triple threat match in the Cruiserweight Eliminator. It's Kalisto, look at that, taking Isaiah Swerve Scott over there. And an interesting note on next week's contest. Remember recently on WWE Main Event, Ricochet went one-on-one -on -one with Lince Dorado. It was an awesome and very exciting Cruiserweight affair. Oh, wait a minute, Kalisto looking to put Angel Garza away here. Kalisto going to pick up the victory, and he almost had him there. Garza getting the shoulder up at about two and a half. But as I was mentioning, some writing on next week's contest where Ricochet, like I said a few weeks ago, beat Lince Dorado on main event. Lince Dorado was, looked pretty upset about that loss a few weeks back. I'm sure he's going to be looking to get that win victory over Ricochet next week as well as Humberto Carrillo. Isaiah back in the ring here takes over Angel Garza. This triple threat match has been exciting. It's been impressive for all three of these men. Kicking us off here on Monday Night Raw. Still to come tonight. As we mentioned, oh, wait a minute. Look at this. Look at that kick. Isaiah making roll. Swerve's house here. Into the cover on Kalisto, but Kalisto gets the shoulder up. Isaiah Swerve Scott almost putting him away. Goes for the chop. Kalisto there to cut him off. Go for the suplex here. Isaiah goes behind, hooks the hips, pops the hips in the German suplex. Angel Garza is back in the ring. Isaiah Swerve Scott takes him out, though, with that springboard moonsault. Didn't get all of it, but he got enough. All three of these men have been very impressive in this contest, but you got to pin somebody's shoulders to the mat or make them submit here. Now Angel Garza looking to shoot Isaiah Swerve Scott off. He sends him to the outside. And we're left with Kalisto as well as Angel Garza inside of the ring. Angel picking up Kalisto, hanging him in the Tree of Woe. Let's see what Angel Garza's got in mind. Oh, Isaiah's back in the ring. And Garza switches his focus and hits those double knees. And now Kalisto, though, comes from behind. Isaiah's right there. This is what we're talking about with the triple threat action. You got to keep eyes in the back of your head, but it's so hard to. And he got so many moving parts, especially with the style of these cruiserweights. Kalisto taking Isaiah Swerve Scott for a ride. Now he's going after Garza here. Kalisto's really trying to build momentum. Garza gets sent down to the canvas. And Kalisto. Nice fireman's carry on Isaiah Swerve Scott. The former cruiserweight champion is looking good here. Angel Garza. Oh, using Kalisto's own move against him there. The Salida del Sol. The Angel Garza. Not watching the ring awareness, Isaiah Swerve Scott was able to break the pinfall, but I bet if Isaiah wasn't in the ring, that maneuver would have most likely put Kalisto away. Garza using Kalisto's own move against him there. Definitely going to throw him off his game and probably would have gave him the victory if it weren't for the nature of the triple threat contest. Isaiah with a nice Saido suplex to Kalisto. Hits the pump kick on Angel Garza. And now the swerve is rolling the ring just like that. Goes for another one and he hits it flush. Which one of these men is going to move on to Monday Night Raw in a couple of weeks? The challenge of the winner of Humberto Carrillo, Ricochet, and Lince Dorado next week. 
And then number one contenders, Cruiserweight Eliminator, Kalisto, what a maneuver from the top rope. But Isaiah Swerve Scott battling back here. Oh, Kalisto cuts him off. What great action out of these cruiserweights. Kalisto to the cover. He's going to get the win over the swerve here. But Scott gets the shoulder up at two. Beautiful cruiserweight action from Kalisto. You'll see that man do some extraordinary things inside of the ring. Some things that only he can accomplish. And there's Angel Garza back in with that springboard drop kick. Knocking down the swerve. Kalisto's down and out. Isaiah going after Angel Garza. The brawl continues here on Monday Night Raw. What a match we have gotten to kick us off here tonight. Austin, Texas. Angel Garza with the swing blade follows it up with the drop kick there. Can't take anything away from any of these men as they are certainly giving it their all in this contest. Angel Garza laying out Isaiah Swerve Scott. Into the cover goes Garza. Isaiah gets the shoulder up. Man, so close for Garza. Angel's right there, tries going after Isaiah, he counters. Hitting a couple of them knife-edge chops. We got a hook of the arms here. Sends him inside out with that backbreaker. Angel Garza, maybe days. Isaiah Swerve Scott is eyeing up Kalisto. Let's see what he's got in mind. Takes him over, think he's gonna hit that kick. Swerve hits the kick flush. And his Monday Night Raw about to become Swerve's house yet again. No, Kalisto gets the shoulder up. Kalisto is hanging in there. What a maneuver. Isaiah with the shooting star press. Swerve into the cover off the standing shooting star. Gors is down on the outside. Isaiah gets the win. What a hard fought victory. And what an exciting contest to kick us off here tonight. Cruiserweight action at its finest showcased themselves here tonight on Monday Night Raw. After everything these men gave, your winner is the Swerve. Isaiah Swerve Scott punches his ticket to the finals of the Cruiserweight Eliminator in a couple of weeks time here on Monday Night Raw. Here is your winner, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Now it becomes a waiting game. Will it be Ricochet, Humberto Carrillo, or Lince Dorado facing Isaiah Swerve Scott in a couple of weeks? We will find out next week here on Raw, but the Swerve is moving an inch closer to SummerSlam. And we continue on here on Monday Night Raw with some women's division action. It's going to be Shotzi going one-on-one -on -one with Io Shirai. This should be an exciting women's contest coming your way from Austin, Texas. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Oakland, California, Shotzi. Shotzi has been an interesting woman to watch here. Over the last couple of months, you remember back before Backlash when Shotzi went one-on-one -on, -one on two occasions with the current WWE Women's Champion Bianca Belair. She came up short in both of those contests, but impressed so many. Shotzi was, of course, a part of the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match as well back in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, she was not successful on that night, but Shotzi continuing to impress. One appearance after the other here on Monday Night Raw. Of course, last week here on Raw, in the main event, we saw Bianca Belair retain the WWE Women's Championship over Rhea Ripley in that no-holds-barred matchup. So now that Bianca has moved past Rhea, it's going to be very interesting, interesting to see who steps up next to challenge her for the WWE Women's Championship, especially with SummerSlam on the horizon. You want to talk about championships, let's talk about Shotzi's opponent here tonight, Io Shirai, a former NXT Tag Team Champion for the women, as well as a former NXT Women's Champion. Io Shirai is new here to the main roster. She was, of course, a participant as well in the women's Money in the Bank ladder matchup. She came up short, as well as Shotzi. Of course, is the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, that was victorious on that night. It is now holding the briefcase. But here we go, right here tonight. Io Shirai, one-on-one -on -one with Shotzi. This will be an exciting contest here in the women's division. Rolling us on here on Monday Night Raw. And Io immediately kicks it off, snapping those hips fast with the German suplex to Shotzi. And 
takes her down there. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two women's styles match up against... The oh, wait a minute here. Breaking news, unfortunately. It looks like we got an update on Riddle. A grade 4 concussion. 4 to 6 weeks recovery time. That is not what you want to hear, unfortunately, for one half of RK Bro Riddle. But there's your update. I guess I could say it. It could be worse. Unfortunately, we still don't know who attacked Riddle. We're hoping to get some answers sooner rather than later, but there's your update coming from the hospital here in Austin, Texas. Riddle diagnosed with a grade four concussion after getting attacked in the parking garage earlier today. He's going to be out of here the next four to six weeks, which basically confirms that Riddle will be missing the SummerSlam pay-per-view, which is very unfortunate. I guess we'll talk more about the Riddle situation later tonight when we... Assume we will see Randy Orton take on Bobby Lashley in the main event if Bobby Lashley chooses to accept Randy Orton's challenge for a one-on-one -on -one contest here tonight. But nonetheless, let's get back to the action inside of the ring. Shotzi and Io Shirai here, one-on-one -on, -one on Monday Night Raw. Shotzi looking to continue to impress, but it's really about putting some wins together for Shotzi it is. As we mentioned, she's been a part of a couple of big matches as of late. And she certainly impresses every single time she has stepped into the squared circle. Unfortunately for her, she's been more or less on the losing side of things. And Io Shirai, of course, is coming off the loss in the Money in the Bank ladder match as well. On the other hand, she was impressive in her Money in the Bank qualifying match, if you remember. Oh, nice shot right there. And Io Shirai. I cut myself off to give Io Shirai the praise. Look how fast she got out of the way of that super kick from Shotzi. And now he uses the strength over Shotzi and takes her down to the canvas below. And Io stomping on the arm. Very impressive. Looking to put Shotzi away here. And in the cover, and Shotzi gets the shoulder up. Shotzi and Io continuing their fight here on Monday Night Raw. Of course, as we mentioned last week in the main event of Monday Night Raw, we saw the Nightmare Rhea Ripley go one-on-one -on -one with the EST, Bianca Belair. And a no-holds-barred match for the WWE Women's Championship. It was their second meeting. Of course, that match stemming from the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And boy, did they beat the living hell out of each other in that main event last week on Raw. If you missed it, I definitely recommend checking out the replay there if you want to see an extraordinary women's division match with the Women's Championship on the line. Of course, on that night, as we mentioned, Bianca Belair walking out with the WWE Women's Championship and her second victory over the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. So after that, you gotta believe that the Nightmare has now been left behind the EST of WWE, and Bianca Belair is gonna be looking to move on to her next challenger at the SummerSlam pay-per-view. And it very well could be one of these women here, Shotzi, as well as Io Shirai. I'm sure Shotzi would love to get a third crack at Bianca Belair. On the other hand, I'm sure Io Shirai would love to continue her momentum and continue to impress here on the main roster, but Shotzi about to get the win here, but Io Shirai gets the shoulder up. Two women have been going back and forth since the get-go. Very good contest, very entertaining contest between the two thus far. Here's Shirai battles back. Nice spin kick to the gut of Shotzi there. Gonna continue the strikes. The strikes of Io Shirai, absolutely extraordinary. And that Insiguri kick absolutely lands flush. Io is so exciting and so innovative inside the squared circle. But she also knows the basics, such as what she's doing here, and that's just beating the hell out of Shotzi. It's all about getting it done one way or another inside of the ring here on Raw. Shotzi's dazed and confused in the corner. Io Shirai bringing her to the very tippy top rope. And Io could be looking for a little bit of that high risk action that we know her for so well. Io Shirai's headed up there with Shotzi in hand. Spanish fly from the top rope from Io Shirai. A fantastic maneuver sends Shotzi crashing nearly through the mat. Io into the cover looking to put Shotzi away here, but somehow, some way, Shotzi gets the shoulder up. Extremely impressive maneuver from Io Shirai. Thought she put the exclamation point on Shotzi, but there's Shotzi battling back with the Hurricane Rana. A lot of high flying action here out of these two women. Now Shotzi hits an Insiguri of her own. Don't know if it's going to be as impactful as the strikes that we see Io Shirai hit. But nonetheless, when you get kicked to the side of the Chrome Dome, it's definitely going to knock you loose. Shoots Io Shirai off, now catches her in the swinging neck, swinging neck breaker, excuse me. 
Io standing out, Shotzi's heading to the top rope. Looking to go high risk herself, and she hits that splash from the top. And that could be all, Shotzi looking to put away Io Shirai there, but Shirai gets the shoulder up. Shotzi hitting that Shotzi splash, if you will. From the top here, Io Shirai able to get out of it. Now Shotzi grabs a hold, slice spread maneuver, Io Shirai hits the canvas hard again. Shotzi's picking up some momentum here ever since Io failed to put Shotzi away off the Splash Fly. Shotzi has got a fire underneath of her. And she is unloading on the former NXT Women's Champion. But there's Io Shirai battling back with a nice kick. Grabbing a hold, grabs the leg, taking out Shotzi from under her feet. Now let's see what Io's got in mind. Oh man. Talk about sending Shotzi down to the canvas with impact. But she's not done. Once again, flips her over. Now a knee, and Shotzi basically falls off the knockout blow, and she hits another one. And this thing is starting to pick up here. Io Shirai and Shotzi are throwing everything they got at each other. Both these women looking to put the other away. Shotzi's a bit far out. I don't know if Io Shirai's going to be able to make that jump. I wouldn't risk it if I were her. There she see Io Shirai. Electing otherwise. Now she's headed out to the apron. She's going to the top rope near Shotzi, but Shotzi's getting to her feet. Shotzi takes out Io and sends her down to the canvas. Goes for the senton. Io gets out of the way. Io with the kick. Back and forth we go here, but Shirai delivers the knee to the chrome dome of Shotzi. Shirai to the top. Shotzi trying to meet her there. Nice fall away. Io Shirai takes the ride. Shotzi grounded and pounded on Io. And back and forth. The teeter totter goes. And Shotzi grabs a hold and she delivers those double knees and follows it up with a senton. Shotzi going into the cover here. Looking to get the win off the combination of maneuvers. Io Shirai gets the shoulder up. This thing is hitting an exclamation point. Shotzi's heading up. She's looking to. Put the final nail in the coffin of Io Shirai. Big time super fly splash from the top rope. She hit it earlier, it didn't land, or it did land flush, but it wasn't enough. But now Shotzi's looking to follow it up with yet another maneuver. What a coffin drop like Senton from the top rope. Shotzi delivers it flush, and she picks up the big time win over Io Shirai. What an exciting contest here on Monday Night Raw. Between these two women, Io Shirai and Shotzi, leaving it all inside the squared circle with maneuvers like that. Shotzi certainly survived some of the best offense out of Io Shirai. Io not able to hit that picture-perfect moonsault here tonight. And Shotzi was able to withstand the punishment with maneuvers like that and maneuvers like that coffin drop senton that we saw out of Shotzi. She had the right combination of maneuvers. And enough intestinal fortitude to put Io Shirai away here on Monday Night Raw. Here is your winner, Shotzi. Shotzi picking up momentum. What a win for her here tonight on Monday Night Raw. Exactly the win that Shotzi needed to keep her elevated and to keep her going in her women's division career. Well, the action keeps on rolling on here on Monday Night Raw tonight as the God Adele Phantasma takes on the Mysterios in tag team action as well as Austin Theory versus R-Truth. And in the results of those contests, Dominic and Rey Mysterio pick up the win over Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde in the tag team affair. And on the other hand, all day Austin Theory, the young man from Atlanta, picks up the win over R-Truth in the one-on-one -on -one meeting. We're back inside the arena here on Monday Night Raw in Austin, Texas. Akira Tozawa set for one-on-one -on -one action here against a colossal, dominant newcomer force to the WWE. The name is Omas, and he's set for his second match in his young WWE career right here, right now. And his opponent from Lagos, Nigeria, playing in at... 400 pounds. Omos! Two weeks ago here on Monday Night Raw, the colossal Omos made his WWE debut against Brian Kendrick. And Omos 
absolutely obliterating Kendrick in that contest. And now Omos set for his second matchup here in his young WWE career against Akira Tozawa, former Cruiserweight Champion, a man who put up an effort against the Intercontinental Champion Sheamus a number of weeks ago, but I gotta weigh things out here. I don't like Akira Tozawa's chances against this guy right here. What a dominant force is the Colossal Omos. This giant from Nigeria. Absolutely intimidating. And absolutely a force to be reckoned with here on Monday Night Raw. But let's see what happens. Let's see if Akira Tozawa can bring the fight to the Colossal Omos. As we keep things going on Monday Night Raw. And the match is underway. And Omos immediately grabbing a hold of Tozawa. Remember, Omos just absolutely dominated Brian Kendrick a few weeks ago. Beat him in a matter of moments. Kendrick didn't even get an offensive maneuver in the entire contest. And unfortunately, I don't like Akira Tozawa's chances here as Omos is already <laughs> dominating Akira Tozawa right off the bat. Tozawa didn't even get a chance to throw a punch or throw a kick. Just look at the size of this man from Nigeria. There's a reason they call him the Colossal. Just dragging an already lifeless body of Tozawa there. It's almost a hard to call matchup here. Omas is going for an early cover after just stepping on the chest of Akira Tozawa. Tozawa barely able to get the shoulder up. I gotta be honest, Omas, the only reason he probably didn't put Akira Tozawa away, or excuse me, I should say, tried to even go for a cover to put Akira Tozawa away there is the, the naive of the young man. Omos, but at the end of the day, you gotta take the strength with with the naiveness of Omos, and he'll learn what he's gotta learn inside the ring. And look at Akira Tozawa here, grabbing a hold, able to swing out the knee of Omos. And Omos immediately getting back to his feet. Look at that, Akira Tozawa runs to the top rope. Omos is right there. Akira Tozawa on the top rope is just almost as tall as Omos. And Omos just sends him with a slam from the top rope. And this time he goes into a cover. And Tozawa, off that throw, just gets the life knocked out of him. Tozawa <laughs> really putting up a fight. But, I mean, pretty much what we expected here. The Colossal Omos in his second matchup here on Monday Night Raw, picking up the victory over Akira Tozawa. Here is your winner, Omos! The Colossal, the giant, the big man from Nigeria, Omos continues to impress here on the main roster in the WWE. Coming up on Universe Mode Episode 26, it's WWE Main Event. At a big time, six-man tag team match has been signed. The Messiah Seth Rollins, his disciple Buddy Murphy, as well as all-day Austin Theory take on Mansoor, Mustafa Ali, and the WWE Champion, the Phenomenal, AJ Styles. What a six-man tag team collision with a lot of tensions running between both teams coming up on Main Event. We are set here for our Main Event Contest here tonight on Raw. The Apex Predator, the Viper, Randy Orton, is out for vengeance against the almighty Bobby Lashley. This is going to be a good one. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, representing RK Bro from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper. Randy Orton, as he stated in his tweet earlier today, is pissed off, he's confused, and he's looking to hurt somebody. After his tag team partner of RK Bro Riddle was found knocked unconscious in the parking garage earlier today, Randy Orton sticks the blame to the hurt business, and specifically to the almighty Bobby Lashley. Why he does so is, of course, Bobby Lashley was unsuccessful weeks ago in that Money in the Bank qualifying matchup against Matt Riddle. That, of course, came to a head two weeks ago here on Monday Night Raw after Bobby Lashley was looking for vengeance 
after losing his opportunity to compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And we had a tag team contest that featured the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley and MVP versus RK Bro, Riddle and Randy Orton. The reason being as to Bobby Lashley sticking the blame at Randy Orton and telling Orton to look in the mirror was of course in that contest, Randy Orton seemingly didn't want to tag in Riddle. After Randy Orton tagged out of the matchup, Orton stood on the outside and watched the entire damn match and watched Riddle basically get the hell beat out of him from the Hurt Business here. But no, wait a minute. This is not Bobby Lashley. This is not what we were expecting. And his opponent representing the Hurt Business from Orangeburg, South Carolina, weighing in at 248 pounds, Showtime Benjamin. Well, I'm sitting here trying to explain the situation at hand, and it seems like Bobby Lashley has elected not to meet Randy Orton inside the squared circle tonight, and instead has sent Hurt Business member Shelton Benjamin out to the ring to seemingly do his dirty work. I'm sure Randy Orton isn't happy about this. But, well, Bobby Lashley never said, I guess, that he was going to be the one facing Randy Orton here tonight. He said he was going to put the Hurt one way or another. But wait a minute, Randy Orton doesn't want to wait. He's pissed off and he's coming from behind on Shelton Benjamin. And I guess this is your main event. Randy Orton versus Shelton Benjamin. Not what we were expecting, but it's the matter at hand. Randy Orton not getting the match, nor the man he wanted inside of the ring. Bobby Lashley said that one way or another, Orton was going to get the hurt put on him for putting Bobby Lashley's name in his mouth. But I guess he meant he was going to send a hurt business member and Shelton Benjamin out to the ring to seemingly, as we mentioned, do his dirty work for him. It's Shelton Benjamin and Randy Orton here. Now your main event here in Austin, Texas for Universe Mode Episode 25 on Monday Night Raw. But as we were mentioning before, Shelton Benjamin threw us off here upon his appearance. There's that tag team matchup a couple of weeks ago that we are alluding to. And you remember it was on that night that Bobby Lashley did indeed get his win back over, over Riddle. And that was seemingly what he was searching for. And seemingly why he wanted to get his hands on Riddle, so... I can't sit here and say that it's a clear-cut reason that Orton has to point the finger at Bobby Lashley because Lashley makes a lot of sense, but on the other hand, Randy Orton, I really don't think I'd expect Randy Orton to be the one to attack Riddle, especially because of how close their bond has, and especially has gotten a lot closer than I think Randy Orton ever expected. You know, RK Bro, Randy Orton's even stated in the past, wasn't supposed to be something he was going to dive so deep into. But seemingly Riddle became his best friend on the planet. And yeah, they've had their issues as of late. They've lost the World Tag Team Championships. Of course, Riddle was pinned on both the championship match as well as the rematch there. We talked about it a few weeks ago when Riddle got the qualifying matchup for Money in the Bank over Randy Orton. Randy Orton seemed frustrated and didn't want to celebrate with Riddle leaving the ring after the contest. And then, of course, things seemingly escalated more a few weeks ago when Orton watched... Bobby Lashley and MVP take apart Riddle inside that tag team matchup, but even through everything Randy Orton's done in his career, as we mentioned, Randy Orton seems like he's just gotten way too close to Riddle to let a couple of hiccups over the last couple of months have everything go up in flames. At the end of the day, that's just how we see it, and not for nothing, but Randy Orton's been somebody who throughout his career, every time he strikes, he's pretty good to let you know. He wants you to know who put the hurt on you, who put the destruction on you. And that's been the apex predator, Randy Orton. So attacking somebody from behind and fleeing the area. Jesus! Shelton Benjamin powerbombing Randy Orton to the outside. As the brawl continues here. Now Benjamin exploded to the outside of the ring as well. Benjamin's definitely taking orders from Bobby Lashley and certainly putting the hurt on Randy Orton here tonight. But as we were mentioning, Randy Orton throughout his career has always been somebody who's been very direct with his attacks and his enemies and his issues. So I find it hard to believe that Randy Orton would be the one to come from behind, attack Riddle, and flee the scene. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I got to think Randy Orton is correct here and that Bobby Lashley was the one who attacked Riddle, or at least a member of the Hurt Business sent by Bobby Lashley. You know, Lashley may have gotten his win in that tag team match a couple of weeks ago, but remember, Bobby Lashley has been 
pretty infuriated as of late. Is Shelton Benjamin off that splash, going into the cover on Randy Orton, going to put him away in this matchup here, but Orton gets the shoulder up. As I was mentioning, Lashley's been pretty infuriated as of late since losing the WWE Championship to AJ Styles, and Orton with a big-time neckbreaker. Vintage Randy Orton there. And then, of course, losing that Money in the Bank qualifier to Riddle. And Randy Orton off that knee, I believe he may have just cracked Shelton Benjamin open. The Viper, the snake in the grass, smells blood over Benjamin here. Randy Orton was told he was going to get the hurt put on him. But he was the one who was out for vengeance and said he wanted to hurt somebody here tonight. He wanted Bobby Lashley, but he's got Shelton Benjamin instead. And after some back and forth, and Benjamin certainly putting the offense on him, Randy Orton seemingly has Shelton right where he wants him here. And Randy, look at this, beating down, pummeling down the member of the Hurt Business. Shelton Benjamin is dazed and confused with blood trickling from the eyes. Orton sends him into the corner. But Benjamin's trying to fight back here, trying to do one good for his squad of the Hurt Business. Look at this, trying to let the blood rush to Orton's head. Orton counters, though. Even through a fight, you gotta out-wrestle somebody who is such a talented wrestler inside the ring like him or not, Shelton Benjamin. Orton shoots Orton off, or excuse me, Orton shoots Benjamin off, and now the Luthes press, beaten down. Orton certainly has been vicious in this main event, attacking Shelton Benjamin before he could even get the music stopped playing inside the arena here. And a vintage slam by Randy Orton. Benjamin's dazed and confused. Orton looks to be going to that place. RKO! The Viper strikes on Shelton Benjamin. And Randy Orton gets the victory. And I'm sure that victory feels real sweet for the Viper. Randy Orton doing one good for his tag team partner of RK Bro, Matt Riddle. Shelton Benjamin may not have been the opponent that the Viper was searching for here tonight. But the Viper struck with the RKO. And Orton gets the win here tonight. I'm sure the win feels sweet, but Randy Orton nonetheless didn't get what he wanted here tonight. He wanted Bobby Lashley inside the squared circle. And you gotta think that the Viper still has his eyes locked on the Almighty One. And whether it's here on Raw, whether it's on Main Event, whether it's back in the locker room at any arena across the states, Randy Orton is gonna be searching for the Almighty Bobby Lashley. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute here, Randy Orton Randy Orton's got his eyes locked down. Shelton Benjamin, who's on the outside of the ring. Holy! Randy Orton diving to the outside. And now Randy Orton's going to that place. For the second time, hits the RKO to Shelton Benjamin on the outside of the ring. A bloodied Shelton Benjamin. Left for dead by the hands of the Apex Predator. Like the actions or not. Randy Orton was seeking vengeance, and he gets a semblance of that here tonight. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on Universe Mode.